The National Broadcasting Company invites you by transcription to join the Chase. animal world, there is the hunter and the hunted. Hound and fox, hawk and sparrow, cat and mouse. We in the topmost species have also joined the hunt. But who is to judge precisely which of us are hounds or foxes as we enter the chase? Ed, three sweet thousand in cash. I told you I didn't want any part of it, Mr. Horgan. Now listen, Ed, we've been all over that. It isn't as if I'm asking you to get up in court and fake a story for me. But if they call you, all I'm asking is you say you don't remember one way or the other. But I do remember. You used to see Big Davy all the time. Now look, Ed, if you think it's your job to try to frame Big Davy... My job's fixing cars. Has been since I found out the score and quit driving for you. I'm not volunteering testimony to frame anybody. That's the way, Ed. Mind your own business and let these blue-nosed investigators mind theirs. That's just the way the other three drivers are figuring it. Well, they can figure it any way they want. If I'm called, I'm telling the truth. Anything I remember and they ask me about, I'll give straight. Now, wait a minute. i got to be getting back to the garage. I'll tell you what, Ed. Suppose we uh, talk again in a couple of days when you've had time to mull this thing over. Won't do any good, Mr. Horgan. Well... Have a cigar, anyway, and I'll stop by next time I'm in town. You know, Ed, come to think of it, maybe you're right at that. When they put me on trial there, maybe I'll just stand up and tell the plain, honest truth myself. That's for you to work out. But you might sleep better if you did. Maybe so, Ed. Maybe so. Well, I'll be seeing you next time I come through. And uh, give my best to that nice little wife of yours. Morgan. My name's not Doug. Okay, I'm Steve Owens, and this is Johnny. My Chicago manager said you wanted to see a field man about some service. Oh? Well, it seems I did put in a call sometime yesterday about... You put the call in at 3, 2, 4 p.m. Yeah. Yeah, won't you come in, Steve? One man was all I asked for. We're breaking Johnny in on the territory. Won't be any extra charge. Johnny, shake hands with Mr. Horgan. Glad to know you, Mr. Horgan. Johnny's just learning the business. He's coming along fine. Just learning Don't the... worry, I'll be in charge. We talk here, or... We can talk here. That chair's the comfortable one, Steve, if you... Well, the bed's fine. You and Johnny can have the chairs. Cigar? No, thanks. You, Johnny? Yeah, not for me, Mr. Horgan. I got some pretty fair bourbon here. You can you... skip the salad dressing, Horgan. Johnny and I got a real job coming up back east when we finish for you. We can't give this more than a couple of days. A real job? Didn't the district man tell you I wanted... You told me what you wanted. It's just a $2,000 deal, isn't it? Chicago tell you that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now get to it, Horgan. Who's your friend? What's the problem? Does Johnny have to be around while we... I uh... told you, I'm breaking him in. Look, do you want the service or do we take off now? The man I'd like you to get in touch with is named Ed Tarchik. Tarchik? He works as a garage mechanic for a man named Chance in a small town about 40 miles from here. A place called Alcudia. Now I'll give you a marked road map later. Let's have it now. And there's a snapshot slipped in there that I'll take back after you've seen it. Tarchik's at the garage from 8.30 to 5. And usually goes straight out to work on a little place outside town he's just finished building for himself. Married? Yeah, her name's Stella. Kids? None so far, but I believe they're expecting. Uh, Mr. Horgan, this Tarchik, a young guy or what? He's older than you, Johnny. 
Probably not as old as Steve. I'd say about 28. You know if he had any overseas army service? Two years, what I think. What? The outfit likes to know. Okay, some army service will allow for it. Now, what's this sketch clip to the road map? The back roads leading out to Tarchik's place. It's on some old farmland his father-in-law gave them. Right. Now, do you need anything else? Some down money and C-notes. Old bills. It's in this envelope. Are you checking out this hotel this afternoon? Tonight. Want to be phoned back at your own place after? No, no. All I want to do is pick up the Alcudia paper two days from now and read that Ed Tarchik is dead. And the further back in the paper I have to hunt for the story, the better I'll like it. You'll like it. The outfit's customers always like it. Take it easy, Johnny. Don't do over 40. And that sign back there said 45 was all right. We'll be in Alcudia in plenty of time. Stick to 40. I uh, head for that Chances garage when we get there, right? No, you pull up at a gas station. I'll pick one out when we hit town. Hey, Steve, you know what? What? You didn't even ask Corgan how come he wants Tarchik tagged. Any reason we have to know? Well, I only thought Listen, that we... when you're working for the outfit, all you have to know is who and when. Not even how, because that's up to us. Who and when, that's all. Get into any more and it starts to get tangled. I wasn't trying to tangle it, Steve. I was just wondering. Look, you wonder what horse you like in the fourth. You wonder maybe when you can get the green light for some guy's girl you want to move in on. You don't wonder about any part of any job. You get the assignment, you set it up, you wrap it up, and you get out. That's all. Uh, so you don't know what this star chick did to get out of line? Of course I know. Well, how'd you find out, Horgan? He didn't have to. I read the papers, and the district man had the rest of it. You know, Horgan's trial comes up next week, don't you? Well, I knew there was that investigation of his companies on, sure, but Tarchik I... Tarchik did some driving for one of the dummy corporations back three or four years. Of four witnesses who could hang Horgan up by the heels, Tarchik's the only one stupid enough not to get in line. The way it stands, they call him and it's shaving a haircut for Horgan. Hmm. Why would a guy get foolish enough to go against Horgan and Big Davy? Don't wear your brains out. It's the way I told you. All we have to know is who and when. Okay, Steve, okay. Hey, uh, what's the play at the gas station? Your part's simple. Ears open, mouth shut. Okay, Mac. 320 on the gas and you don't need oil. You want me to check the tires? No, they're all up. Here's the four and call it square. Well, thanks, fella. If you want your windshield washed, you can the give me a steer if you live here in Alcudia. Sure, I'm from town here. Well, uh, there's this guy who wants to sell my friend a used car, but we're not so smart about motors. Well, who is? You don't do repair work here? No, you have to go to Chances for anything like that. Chances? Uh, you know any of the guys that work at Chances? Well, there's uh, just two of them, uh, Jake Lesler and Ed Tarchik. Both good guys. Huh? Uh, where would I find Lesler when he's not at the garage? He boards over at Mrs. Fisher's, just down the street here. Mrs. Fisher's, huh? And what about Tarchik? Well, uh, Ed's place is about three, four miles out of town. Out on an old dirt road that takes off from the blacktop road to the lake. Maybe it'd be easier if you lined up Jake. No, it's out past the lake, they say this car is... This, uh, this Tarchik's place might be right on the way. Well, he's pretty far back in off the blacktop, and no neighbors around there to ask if you get mixed up on the turn Well, we still got some daylight. Tell me, uh, Tarchik got a phone out there in case we wanted to call him? Well, not yet. He and his father-in-law, that's old Jim Hellinan, they've been trying to get lines run out that way ever since Ed built his place, but I guess there ain't enough other houses near to make it pay out for the telephone company. You know what I'd do? I'd just go over there to the garage and look up uh, Jake or Ed right there. Now, it's after six. They'd have knocked off over at the garage by now, wouldn't they? Well, I guess they would at that. Look, Steve, we're losing time. Hadn't we better take get... Take it easy, kid. Take it easy. Guy buying a car or lining up a girl, he's got to take his time and get it set up right. The way our friend here says. Uh, by the way, Mac, would it be okay to use your name in case we look up Lesler or Tachik? Oh, sure. I'm Sam Corbin, and if it'll help put Ed or Jake in the way of picking up an easy outside 10 or 15, go right ahead and say we were talking. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. All right, kid. We can or if you want me to phone over to Mrs. Fisher's right now and see if maybe Jake's there. No, no, I'll let it go. You've been helping enough as it is. Well, wouldn't be no trouble to do Thanks it. Thanks a lot, Sam. We can handle it from here. Be seeing you.
Okay, Johnny. In under those trees to do it. Hey, you want me to pull in all the way? No, I can see there's enough cover. Swing around and head back for Tarchik's turnoff. Steve, you think we're ready to take him now? Just about, Johnny. Just about. <laughs> This is still a road, Steve. Those trees leaning any closer and we'd need a bulldozer to get through. We're all right, Johnny. Ought to be there around this next bend ahead. This Tarchik must think he's a Donald Boone or something. What's the guy want to live way out in the woods like this for? Daniel. What? It was Daniel Boone, not Donald. Oh. This is just overgrown farm country. There was an old pasture back there a ways. Hey, pull up a second, Johnny. I don't see no house. He'll be there in a minute. I want to check the guns. Uh-huh. Now, let's see yours, Johnny. Yeah, she's ready to go, Steve. I let's always see it. Okay. Now, remember, you just pump for the belly. Or if you're behind him, for the middle of his back. No fancy tries for the head or the heart. Big thing is, get a couple of slugs in fast. Hey, you gonna let me take him, Steve? I might, if we can get him away from the house without any trouble. Mm, that's the way you're gonna work it, Steve? Get him into the car and down the road somewhere? That's the way, if you'll play along. It'll give us a better start out of here. Hey, you know, Steve, I was just thinking. Just thinking what? Hey, it's like we was closing in on an animal or something. With a real operation going, a guy like Tartik, he's got no more chance than a rabbit. Ever knocked off any rabbit, Johnny? Of course not. Where would a city kid come up against a rabbit? Yeah, but there was a while there we used to try out our zip guns on alley cats. You're Why out would... of the zip gun league now, kid. Get the car going, let's get there. Yeah. Uh, what about his wife, Stella, Steve? Do we take a little extra time with her afterward, the uh, way Horgan said, to make it look like Never we were... mind what Horgan said. Yeah, but if this Stella kicks up any trouble, could we... If she kicks up trouble, Horgan gets two bodies for the price of one. Easy, there's a house up behind those trees. And that must be Karchik's car that pulled off the road. Swing around and park facing back the way we came. Better make it so as we block off this car. Right. Car motor on? Off. Nobody out on the porch there. Figure they might still be having supper? It's getting on for dark. They'd have eaten half an hour ago. What, do we, we just go to the door or what? What else? Go ahead, Doc. Well, there's, there's somebody in there all right, Steve. What are you getting, jumpy? Keep your hand away from that shoulder holster. I, I, I was just straightening my tie. You tighten up and out. Good evening. Oh, evening, Mrs. Tarchik. Ed around. Well, if that isn't a relief. You fellas are friends of Ed? Uh, not exactly. Sam Corbin sent us. Sam at the gas station? Yeah. Oh, I heard your car pull up, and then when I looked through the window, I couldn't think what in the world two strangers might want out here at this hour, but as long as Sam sent My you friend here's got a used car he's thinking of buying, and what Sam thought was maybe Ed could do us a favor and go take a look at it for us, seeing as Ed's a mechanic. Well, I'm not sure that... There'd be 10 or 15 bucks in it for him, Mrs. Tarchik, whether we buy the car or not. Could you tell him we're here? Well, that's just it. Ed's over at my father's. Over at your father's? Isn't that Ed's car parked down there? Yes, but Pop's place is just in back of us here. At least it's only five minutes or so to walk. Ed went over right after supper to help Pop get his water pump going again. Pop needs a new pump. That's what it really comes down to. But he keeps getting Ed to fix his old one up. Hey, wait a minute, Mrs. Tarchik. This is the end of your side road, and there's no turnoff. You're telling us your father's place doesn't even have a road leading to it? No, Pop's on the next road over, the other side of the brook. Uh, what name will we look for on your father's mailbox? Hallinan, James Hallinan. I'm sorry we haven't got phone so I could call over and save you the trouble. Oh, it won't be no trouble, Mrs. Tajik. You can't miss Pop's place. There aren't but three houses on the road, and there's a big boulder backing up his mailbox. Oh, thanks a lot, Mrs. Tajik. We'll find it. Let's go, Johnny.
Okay, Johnny. There's the mailbox and the boulder. We both go in? Ah, you hold on here. I can get them off. You, Mr. Hallinan? Uh, certainly am. I have been for just shy under 68 years. Well, your daughter said I'd find Ed Tarchik here. It's about some business. Well, you just come from Stellar's? Yeah. Would you tell Tarchik I'd like to see him a minute? There's some money in it for him. I can't. Can't what? I can't tell Ed. He's not around. Look, your daughter said he was over here fixing your pump. Why, he fixed it and went back. Listen, Pop, if you people are trying to give me the run around. Run around? How? Ed know you was coming over here for him tonight? No, but... Well, we just came from Tarchik's and drove all the way around to get here, that's all. Now you tell well, me... Well, now, if you'd taken the shortcut over the brook, you'd have met him on the way. Ed couldn't have left here much more than, oh, five minutes ago. It just goes to show you young fellas take a car to keep from having to walk a couple of steps, and you lose more time. All right, than... all right. So we drove around and we missed him. Do we find him back home now, or is he headed off someplace else? Why, there's no place else to head for out this way. Ed ought to be settling to his paper right about this minute. Thanks, Pop. We'll make the tour again. Nothing to thank me for. Not unless you're trying to sell it something. <laughs> we're not selling them anything, and we're not bill collecting. Just a uh, kind of personal business? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you could call it that. Take it easy, Pop. Tarchik's car's still there, Steve. Uh, he's got to be home this time. Let's go. Yeah. When it gets dark out in the country, it really gets dark. Wait a minute, Jimmy. What is it? Look at the house. Now the light shone. Steve, what's going on out here? First the guy's supposed to be over at Hallinan's, and then he's supposed to be back here. Now it looks like nobody's around. Well, maybe they hit the sack the way real farmers do, right after dark. Look, Steve, Look. I'm straight city race, and I like to see some lights around. What do you say we take off now and line up this guy in town tomorrow? Get organized, Johnny. We hold off till tomorrow, and the whole town will know we're looking for him. It wasn't 20 minutes ago we was talking to Mrs. Tarchik. And if Tarchik's back, he couldn't have got here more than five or ten minutes ago. Well, they rock off to sleep that fast, they'd need knockout drops. Oh, well, they still ought to be awake in there. Come on, we'll get them up. Oh, just Steve, there ain't nobody in there at all. Shut up. Look, Steve, maybe it's this way. Tarchik gets back, see? The wife tells him a couple of guys have gone over to Hallinan's trying to hand him an easy 15 bucks. He swings around, takes the shortcut back to the old man's to catch up with us. What about Stella? She go off picking blueberries in the dark? Well, it's her own old man in the other house. Oh, she could be over there keeping him company, couldn't she? Don't you think that's how it could be, Steve? Sure, and they could have built themselves a raft and gone touring down the brook. But I think they're inside right now. Todd Chick and his wife both. Let's see if we can get any of these windows open. Hey, wait a minute, Steve. We start busting windows and... That's to bust the window. Here's one standing a couple inches open now. Todd Chick, we're the guy Sam Corbin sent about casing the used car. How about opening up? Look, Steve... Either they're out or there's something creepy going on here. Couldn't we be waiting down on this road tomorrow morning Fine and... through, Johnny. Wait a minute. Steve, we've been figuring this tar chick for easy going and not too bright. But Horgan couldn't jockey him an inch. What if he came back? I heard there was a couple of guys looking for him, but didn't fall for this used car deal. Couldn't he figure Fine out... Fine through, that... Johnny. Okay, Steve, you'll be covering me? I'll be covering you. Tarchik. Ed Tarchik. Watch it, Johnny. I'm coming through after you. Yeah. All right. Let's get some lights on and look around. Tarchik. This is Tarchik. You don't have to be scared. We just thought we'd wait inside here for Ed to come back. Now you're talking to yourself, Steve. There's no one around. I would check the kitchen. This bedroom and back. (laughs) 
There's your answer right there, Steve. Bed all made up and nobody here, unless they're hiding under it. Hey, there's a nightgown laid out, Steve. What do you figure? Uh, let's get back out to the car and work this out. Maybe Tarchik and his wife both are a lot brighter than we gave him credit for. Ain't that what I tried to tell you before yeah, when we... Yeah, You were looking for any excuse to get back to town. I still am. You saying you're not ready to pull out of here yet, Steve? Well, maybe we'll wait in the car. Maybe we won't. But turn these lights on. Let's get going. Back inside. Pick the door closed. Those are rifles they got out there. They. Tarchik and the cops, they tried to knock us off without even giving us a chance. Pull out of it, Johnny, or I'll really give it to you. We're not up against cops out there. Yeah, but There's Steve... no phone here or at Hallinan's. No place else near enough to reach. They couldn't have called any law. And if Tarchik thought he could get out by car before we turned back into this road, he'd have been miles away by now. <laughs> okay, so he's got us figured the way it is, but where's it going to get him? What do you mean, where's it going to get him? That rifle slug wasn't six inches from my head when it hit by the door there. Well, we're the guys being hunted now. Get organized. We know there aren't neighbors around. There can't be anybody outside there but Tarchik himself. His wife and the old man. There could be three of them out there, and with rifles. And that's not even counting maybe Hallen gets in his car and goes round. What are we supposed the... to be, pushovers? Come on, we'll get out through the kitchen and back and knock off this grease monkey before he knows what hit him. Wait, kid. <laughs> when you get out, dive for the dirt on the right and keep on your belly till I tell you to move. I ain't going first this time, Steve. I'll come up for you, but I'm not... You need to go first. I'll be out and moving left before you start. But slide out right after me. And don't let the door slam after you. Okay, Steve. I'll be right after you. Get the door open. <laughs> okay. I remember you keep low the way... Hey, that guy's got an army out there. Steve. Steve, can't you hear me? Are you hit? When I catch one, it won't be from a yokel like Tarchik. He creased my arm, that's all. We're the animals now, Steve. They're safe out in the dark there, and, and they got us trapped I in the air. I warned you, Johnny. Get organized. This will help me. I'll blast you myself. But if he's got guys with rifles front and of back, course, how we... figured we'd try through the kitchen. That was automatic after he blocked off the front door. This house has got windows on four sides, Johnny, and that's no four-man squad Tarchik's got out there. Now, let's get moving. But where? To do what? Bedroom first, then front, both sides and back. Crouch down and smash out every window you come to. We'll show these punks they're up against operators. That's the last one, Steve. That got it. And we've knocked out every pane of glass in the place. Okay. Get over to the other side of the house and pump out a couple of fair shots. Well, will you get away on this side? I'll be waiting outside the window here for you. If your shots don't draw them off, I'll get it first when I... Then I, I, I tear back and pile out this window as soon as I get off the shots, huh? Tear back, but you don't pile out. Hmm? Be quiet about getting over the sill and dropping down. Steve, you, you wait up for me. You I'll won't run out. I'll be waiting for you. Get going. You all set? I, I guess so. Let's go. <laughs> Steve. Steve, this is worse than before. They must have heard us. Why ain't they shoot you? Shut up. Steve, let's go in for the car. Keep that on your belly. From here we crawl. Down toward the car. Okay, down toward the car. Good. Steve, we keep inching along this way. We, we'll never get to the car. Shh. Archie could be anywhere here, Steve. Just waiting Shut for up. it. There's someone moving back by the wall. <laughs> no. I guess not. <laughs> I'm making a break for the car, Steve. You coming? Sticking your neck out, Johnny. My necks are already out. All the way out. I'm heading for the car and not on my belly. Okay, but keep low. <laughs> He's gone. The ignition's locked and the key's gone. Look in your pockets. I left it right here in the ignition. Tarchik's trapped us here. He's the one who's closing in, Steve. He's grabbed the key and he... he... 
Steve, wait, don't. Let's get out of here. Steve, wait, don't. Steve, wait for me. No. Steve. Steve, I, I got it in the leg that time. Uh, tough a kid. Steve. Swing around and fire when you hear them coming. Hey, wait a minute, Steve. I, I can't move here unless you give me a hand. I told you I'd teach you the business, Johnny. Oh. Maybe it's time you found out about rule number one. Rule number one? When it gets really rough, it's every guy for himself. I'm taking off right now. Steve, Steve, I'm right. You can't leave me here to be knocked off. You got a gun, Johnny. You can still get tar chick when they close in. Steve! Take it easy, Johnny. I'm pulling out. Steve, get back here. Oh, get back here or you're the guy I'll shoot. Steve, I'm warning you. So long, kid. Steve, I told you I would. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I tell you I would, Steve? Didn't I tell you? Steve. 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 Steve, I just wanted you to stick with me. Steve, Steve, you gotta be alive. You gotta. He's dead, Johnny. Huh? You can drop your gun now. Charge it. No. No, you guys are the ones better look out. <laughs> Not even close, Johnny. Drop the gun. Where are you? Where are you? Last warning, killer. Drop the gun or I'll blow it out of your hand. Yeah, okay, okay. I dropped it. How many... How many guys you got out there with you? I'll have your gun first, Johnny. Hey, who's that? You can't let them rough me up. You can't let them hit a guy to... Shut up. Shut up or I'll clip you. Ed, honey, are you all right? Stella, I told you to get over to Pops and stay there. There's a shotgun. And I had to come back. Pops coming with a shotgun. Ed, are you all right? I'm fine. This guy's got a slug in his leg and the other one's dead. Aren't you... You saying that there wasn't no one here backing you up? Not even your wife and her old man? It was tighter than that, killer. All the ammo I could find for my rifle in those couple of minutes before your car got back was three rounds. Three? Hey, but, but you fired at least three shots at us before. Exactly three. That bullet you've got in your leg was the last one I had. Then we... We could have got away if I hadn't... Sure, if. But maybe it was lucky those three rounds were all I had. This way you'll be alive long enough to help see that Horgan gets it. Ed. Ed, you kept after these killers even with an empty gun when you knew... I didn't know anything, honey. These two had all the answers. All right, killer. Let's get you lifted over to the car and go find ourselves some law. Chase was created for the National Broadcasting Company by Lawrence Clee. Tonight's script written by Charles O'Neill. In tonight's cast were Ken Lynch, Bob Hastings, Bill Smith, Lawson Zerby, and Eileen Palmer. Next week, listen to a race for a fortune in a picture frame on The Chase. The Chase was directed and transcribed by Dan Sutter. Fred Collins speaking. Directed and transcribed by Dan Sutter. Fred Collins speaking.